Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Trainer Talk. Uh, this week, we're on episode 26, so it's officially been half of a year since we started. Um, as you can see, we have a little change of scenery. They are working in the turf right now, putting um, some new, a new furnace in, so we're coming into the group fit room to do our talk today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about long-term health and setting more long-term goals and not thinking so much in the short term. So we're just gonna kind of give you some tips and some insight on how to set long-term goals, some ways to go about doing so, um, and why you should do that as well, and how it can help you with your short-term goals by setting longer-term goals as well. So Bethany will start us off with a couple of her tips, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so like thinking, changing your mindset about your goals. So thinking about where you wanna be in five years versus in five weeks or five months. And what this is going to do, you're going to end up focusing on the process and not getting short-term results and like doing whatever's necessary or doing extreme things to get those results faster. Um, instead, you're like, I understand that there's a process to this. It's going to take time and hard work. Um, but the slower you go, um, the more likely you are to maintain and sustain those results. So you also have to figure like, okay, what's sustainable long-term? You know, you think about five weeks, you can grind out a diet on a thousand calories and work out seven days a week for five weeks. Can you do that for five years? Probably not. Hmm. Um, can you do that for five months? Also probably not. So thinking in terms of five years, all right, so you think I can work out three times a week and have a relatively healthy diet most of the time for five years? Probably. Um, so it's a lot more sustainable and you're gonna see way better results because it's hard to see a lot of results in the short term. You know, you might lose 10 pounds in five weeks, but if you do it in an unsustainable way, you're gonna gain it right back. If you think about, you know, okay, five years, it's 50 pounds or something like that. That's only 10 pounds a year, but you might see those uh, 50 pounds come off faster just because you're focusing on more, something that's more sustainable. Yeah, and you'll have the ups and downs. You're not right. restarting all the time. Right. So even though you could lose 50 pounds in three months or six months, you might put it back on. And then over the span of that five years, you could be at the same point or even worse. Yeah. Because you're Probably constantly worse. going up and down. Whereas if you're setting those long-term goals, 10 pounds a year, 15 pounds a year, you're going to end up continuing to get results and keep them. Right. So yeah, you kind of touched on like breaking down the goals. Um, you say you have a three to five year goal. That's like your main goal of like lose 50 pounds or, you know, get a 300 pound deadlift or something like that. And it's, you know, far from where you are right now, but you break it down into a one year goal. And then you break that down into three month goals. So that way you can kind of check in and make sure you're still like on track. And then you could do check in on a weekly or a monthly basis of like, am I still making progress towards my three week or my three month goal? Um, and then that way you know that in the long term you're gonna hit that goal in five years. And a way to think about it is if you're doing like three times out of the year, you go all in 100% for three months total. So, you know, you do 30 day challenges three times a year but the rest of the time you're off and you're you know, not exercising, your diet is nowhere near where it should be, you're only getting results for 25% of the year. So 75% of the time, it's not good and you're working against yourself. So you're basically failing for the yeah, whole Yeah, so year. you're failing. <laughs> like anything under 50% is failing. So, and you're only getting 25%. So you're not even at failing. It's worse than failing. <laughs> um, <laughs> But if you think about it, you could do 75%, like 75 of the year, which is nine months total. Um, but if you spread that across a year where, you know, you have maybe like a week off here or there, and then you're going to get 75% of your results across the year. So you basically three, three times your results that you get in those three months of going super hardcore and you can do it more relaxed and more sustainable across the year and see way better results. Yeah. We like to we like to think of it like, okay, day by day I could be on track seventy five percent of the time with my nutrition. So that means twenty five percent of the calories I eat could be something I enjoy. Or um, you know, it's just seventy five percent of the time you're putting in the effort 
to reach your goal and 25% of the time, you know, you're just kind of enjoying yourself. So a lot of people go the extreme mile and they cut out everything that they love to eat that's not considered healthy. They, you know, they quit watching Netflix and they go to bed early and they work out twice a day. Like they go nuts with it. You don't really need to do that. Like you just need to work out once a day, maybe three to five times a week, you know, 75% of the time during the week. Um, or you could go really consistently you know, Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday and Sunday, you could take a rest days, you could have an enjoyment meal where you go out to get dinner. That is what we mean by like 75% of the time you're putting in the effort. The rest of the time, you're kind of just enjoying yourself. But if you did that for a whole year, you're going to get way, way better results than if you went 100%, you know, zero to 100 for a whole entire month, three times a year, you're still not going to get as good results. Um, Another way to look at it, I just thought of this. So let's say, you know, we work every single week throughout a whole entire year. You work 40 hours a week for 52 weeks. Why, what if you said to yourself, maybe I'll just work 24 hours a day. You could get the same amount of work done in 86 days. So obviously when I say work 86 days straight for 24 hours, that's physically impossible. You can't go 86 days in a row working in a whole entire day. Even though it's the same amount of time, you have to break it down. You can only work about eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours in a day. You've got to rest. Then you work all year long. So you're doing a very, very small amount every day for the whole entire year, rather than trying to pack in 24 hours of work in 90 days to make your income for the whole year. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to make a certain number in a year, you could work 40 hours a week for 52 weeks or 24 hours a day for 90 days. Obviously the other one's impossible, um, but it's also just, it's unrealistic and it wouldn't work, right? So it's kind of the same thing with your health. You can't just pack it all in in 90 days and expect to have the reward for the rest of the time. You have to just put in a little bit of effort every single day consistently over time. And that's how kind of the results work. That's a good one. So, yeah. Um, Quick calculator. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to touch on was what uh, I really, really love this kind of graph. I'm going to pull up a picture over the video. Um, and it's going to show the CrossFit um, health continuum. So it's going to start from sickness and then it'll go up to wellness and then up to fitness. The goal is for everybody that we train and everybody that watches this, we want to try to get you to the fitness part on the continuum. Think of it like this, fitness, um, you know, your resting heart rate is 50 to 60 beats a minute. Your blood pressure is 110 over 55, a really healthy range. You have good muscular strength. You have a low percentage of body fat. Um, you're just in very, very good overall health and you're basically sustaining that over time. Once you get to the wellness, that's when, you know, you're not necessarily sick but you're kind of creeping toward the sickness. Um, you know, you're right in the middle, like 120 over 80 is considered pre-hypertension now for our blood pressure. You know, your resting heart rate maybe is around 60 beats a minute. Your body fat percentage might be right in the middle of, you know, getting toward um, overweight or obese, but it's not quite in the healthy range. So that's where probably 80% of people lie is right in that wellness. Um, and when you go to the doctor and you get all these tests done, they're going to say you're doing well because you're not sick. The problem is, is you're not doing good. You're probably right there in the middle on the wellness. Well, what happens if some, some kind of tragic event happens? You know, you lose your job, COVID, um, you know, you get sent home, you get in an accident, you have a death in the family, whatever it could be, something tragic that's going to put a lot of strain and stress on your life it's strain and stress in your body, and all of a sudden, boom, you, you work your way down the continuum to sickness. And then you're way more prone to developing diseases, your blood pressure is gonna go up, your cholesterol is gonna go up, you're gonna gain body fat. So you're working your way toward that sickness, and we wanna try to get you the other way. So if you're at the fitness level and something tragic happens like that, you might move down, but you're still doing fine. You're still above the wellness stage. That's where we want people to be, to avoid decrepitude, basically diminishing um, or degenerating over time, basically breaking down muscle, losing bone density, increasing their cholesterol and blood pressure. We don't want to see that happen. So we want to 
see people exercising and eating better, um, setting those long-term goals for longevity to get themselves up on toward the fitness part on the continuum. Because when you're at the sickness level, which is the high um, blood pressure, high cholesterol, low muscle mass, high body fat percentage, that's when you're gonna be um, knocking on death's door or disease's door. So we don't wanna see that. Um, so that is another thing I just wanted to kind of explain and hopefully that visual will help you guys set more long-term goals. Um, another thing I'd really like for people to do is just like think about if you are already at your body weight or your body fat percentage goal, like if you're already there, let's say you wanted to lose 30 pounds and be 20% body fat, whatever it may be, and you're already there, what other goals would you have? How would you want to um, improve upon yourself moving from that point forward? Would you want to have more energy? Would you want to have more strength and endurance to be able to play with your kids or grandkids? Would you want to um, you know, avoid developing disease. Like, what would your goals be? Kind of think about that and then work backward from there, like Bethany said. And the body fat loss and the body weight will naturally happen by itself because if your goal is to strive for overall health, longevity, um, you know, boosting your immune system, increasing energy, being able to have more strength, you're going to have to do those things, the habits that um, get you to that goal which are very, very similar to the same habits that get you to lose body fat and gain muscle in the first place. So you're gonna lose the weight regardless. So we need to kind of change our thinking from, I need to lose 30 pounds to, you know, where do I wanna be in five years, like she said? Like, do I wanna be uh, slowly moving down that continuum toward the sickness level, or do I wanna be going up toward the fitness level? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you wanna think about you know, for example, I have a wedding coming up next year, and I have a couple clients who are also getting ready for weddings, and, you know, they're females, and they're like, oh, I want to lose weight for my wedding. Um, and although I do think that's a good starting place, that's a good motivator to get you, you know, going in the right direction, but what happens, okay, you have your wedding day, you look great, what happens after that? Do you just revert back to your old habits um, and put all that weight back on, plus more, you add kids? into the picture, um, and that's not what we want. We don't care about how much weight you lose, we care about saving people's lives. Yeah. Um, we care about giving you an overall healthy life. Um, you know, we wanna, like Taylor talked about, we wanna keep you out of that sickness part of the continuum. We want to prevent illnesses and diseases. You know, a lot of people blame um, diseases that they get on genetics and that, you know, something Something makes that genetics part of you come out by living that unhealthy lifestyle. Um, it's not something that most of the time just happens out of nowhere. It's because of living that unhealthy lifestyle. Um, and we, we want you to live a long life, but we don't want you to live a long, miserable life. We want you to live a long, good quality of life where you're 90 years old and still walking around and living the same way. You know, people would never guess that you're 90, 80, 70, 60, whatever your age is. Um, again, we want you to be able to keep up with your own children and your grandchildren. We don't want you to be sitting on the couch watching them play. We want you to be able to play with them. Um, and then again, we want to avoid osteoporosis, which is um, your bones getting brittle and breaking over time, which naturally does happen in the human body as we age. Um, your bones weaken, your muscles kind of diminish. But with resistance training, we can avoid that. We can slow that process down so that way you can remain strong um, throughout your life. Yeah, and just to add on to that really quick. So like, um, that's gonna happen regardless. Mm -hmm. Just because of when you reach a certain age, um, you just, a very, very small percentage, but it's got your muscle mass and your bone density will slowly start to go down over the years. And then all of a sudden it gets to a point to where, oh, you, you, know, you break a hip or whatever, and you know it's insane how many people have that have knee surgeries and hip replacements and all this kind of crazy stuff because over time it just slowly diminishes, like she said. So resistance training is something that you do every day to avoid creeping down that continuum and getting worse and worse and worse year by year by year. Instead, you can at least maintain, if not improve yourself to avoid um, getting to that point. So. A lot of people have issues with like back pain or like neck pain because you know they're at a desk all day and they're hunched over but it's also because we don't train 
the muscles on the back side of our bodies, we're always forward, so we're everything's in front of us, right? So if these muscles are more overdeveloped, our body starts to keep forward because these muscles are too strong, back ones are too weak. So our shoulders are forward, not rounded back. Because you know, as we evolved, you know, we're walking and we became upright. Well, we're starting to become more hunched over again, <laughs> and we're like reverting back down the evolutionary chain. It's really weird. Um, but that's one of the things with resistance training is, you know, people get so weak in their core muscles and in their back muscles that one, their discs start to compress on um, each other and that's when you get, you know, more back pain and uh, back troubles and then like you can really easily injure yourself yeah. because you just have a weak back and a weak core because you're not challenging your body at all because you're sitting at a desk all day and you're hunched forward, so you're more easy to have pain and injuries, and then you're gonna have problems down the road with back pain. Yeah. Like, it's inevitable. If you don't do something about it, you're going to have spine issues, you're gonna have neck, you know, neck tightness, pain, knee problems, if you don't, like, fix it and strengthen your body. Yeah. I mean, muscles is basically what holds our body together and actually, like, moves our skeleton, so that's why it's really important to, like, have muscle in strong and not just like lose weight which is a big problem when you're looking in the short term you know people just want to like lose weight lose weight well a lot of people that come in they've yo-yo dieted for so long that they've lost muscle in the process they gain more fat and more fat cells in the process making themselves fatter they have a higher body fat percentage because they have less muscle and then they've added more fat cells through that dieting process of like going 100% for 30 days and then falling off the wagon for three months. 100% for 30 days, falling off the wagon for three months. It primes your body to store fat. So you become a fat storing machine instead of a fat burning machine. So then when you finally try and come and you're only eating 1,000 calories and you're working out five days a week, not losing any fat, that's a problem. Because you've lost muscle, your body does not want to lose fat at all. So you've set your body up to a place where it's not going to lose fat. So that's why if you look five years ahead, and instead of short term, I want to lose fat in five weeks, and then you just make the situation worse, instead if you look five years in the future, it's like, okay, I need to rebuild my metabolism, I need to build muscle, then five years down the road, you can be where you want to be, or one year down the road. It's just, it's going to take time to reverse the damage that's happened to your body. Yeah. yeah, I know I have a lot of clients who come to me and say, okay, well, how long is it going to take me to get from point A to point B, whatever their goal is, to lose 10 pounds or whatever, and I just, I never, ever, ever give anybody a number because, you know, I don't want to be unrealistic, and again, I don't want to speed up the process of trying to lose weight too quickly. I would rather take it slowly and do it the right way and just help them live a sustainable lifestyle. Not a quick fix, um, but a sustainable lifestyle that they can do until the day they die. Yep. Hopefully that's later rather than yes. sooner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah. Just to touch back on what you said about like, oh, I want to lose weight for the wedding or mm -hmm. whatever. I have a cruise coming up and stuff like that. Like, You're basically just telling yourself that you want to look good for a picture that you're going to post on social media. It's pretty much, I mean, then after that, people see you and you've reverted back to your old habits. Like, how are you going to feel then? You know, if you've put all that weight back on, like, you need to think about, you know, why are you really doing it? Like, why do you actually want to look better? Um, and you just kind of ask yourself those deeper meanings. Um, something that you can do, a little tactic, is the five whys. So, Ask yourself why you want to achieve a goal, and then why that's important. Once you answer that, why do you think that way? Um, and then after you ask yourself why about five times, you'll get to the core reason. So even though it starts out with, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds for this cruise, well, why do you want to do that? Because it'll, I'll look better. Well, why do you want to look better? Because I'll feel better about myself. Why do you want to feel better about yourself? So I'm more confident. Why do you want to be more confident? So that I'm a better wife, parent, spouse, I have more energy, um, I just can put more for my family. That's a reason to get in shape, not I want to look good for a cruise. I hate when I hear that. And I try to get people to understand why the core, the actual reason why they want to do it. 
I think the the cruises and the weddings and stuff is almost just kind of a cover up. It's like an excuse to get in shape. Yeah. Um, whereas they actually deep down want to really change their lifestyle overall. Um, so hopefully, if you're somebody that's done that, that you change your mindset a little bit on that and set more of a long term goal. Because at, at the end of the day, all your loved ones and your family members are going to see you every day or every week, no matter what. So even if you looked fantastic for a photo for your wedding or cruise, you know, they want to see you healthy and you should want to be healthy. So you shouldn't just set a goal for a weekend. You know, you should set a goal for a lifetime. So thinking more long term would definitely help. Yeah. Anything else, guys? That's good for you. Okay. So if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out. We want to see more people thinking in the long term and setting goals for a healthy lifestyle, not just a quick fix or trying to lose a certain number of body fat. The scale at the end of the day does not matter. Um, you'll quickly find that out um, after you've achieved some results. You're my, you, you tend to change your goals anyways. Like we've seen a lot with our clients, you know, once they start losing the weight and then they uh, start to appreciate the process of it. And then they're like, you know what? I don't really care about the weight. I want to be able to do a box jump. I want to be able to do pull-ups. You know, I want to be able to do this, do that, whatever. Um, so those goals are very, very cool. And um, you said earlier, what did you say about the goal, some, setting some goal? I um, can't think of it right now, but. Deadlifts? Deadlifts. No, no, it wasn't deadlifts. <laughs> Five percent body fat, was that the one? No. <laughs> Five year goal? No, I can't remember now. <laughs> I apologize, but I had it in my head and then I lost it. But anyways. Setting those kind of goals is just going to be way, it's way more, you appreciate it way more. Like we get a lot of satisfaction from seeing clients that come in and say like how much easier their job was and how much easier it was to run around and play with their kids. Like that should be what we really, really strive for um, is that long-term health and lifestyle, having more energy. I just thought of it. Um, reducing pain, like living a pain-free life all day should be the number one reason. You know, like 80% of people in the United States have back problems and back pain, have back surgeries, like it's crazy. Um, like, just think if you could live every day without having any pain in your knees, your hips, your back, like being able to, to move and be functional and have better mobility, like being able to get up and off the floor with your kids when you're playing, so like that, that, that should be the number one priority and goal because so many people that we talk to, like literally 90% of them have some type of pain um, that they deal with on a daily basis, which not to mention is treated with medications most of the time. So we would like to try to get all of our clients off medications for pain, for blood pressure, for cholesterol. Actually fix a, the problem and got, not cover up We have family. a lot of clients that are pre-diabetic or diabetic that we are helping completely get off um, you know, insulin and trying to get rid of their diabetes. And, you know, we are really trying to prevent and cure a disease, essentially. And what people don't realize, it is preventable and it is curable, a lot of them. Um, what your doctor won't tell you is that it is because it's through basically diet and exercise. And they don't have a pill that is prescribed for diet and exercise. They just give you something as a band-aid to kind of prolong the issue. It's just gonna kind of keep you going for the time being. It's not curing it, it's not preventing it. They put a Band-Aid on it and hope for the best. So we're here to reverse that. Um, we wanna try to prevent that so that way you can go back to your healthy life, lifestyle that you wanna live. So um, I think that wraps up this talk for today. Um, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, like the channel. Um, you can like us, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Taylor Hutchinson Fitness. Feel free to stop in and see the facility if you haven't. We do online nutrition coaching. We do personal training classes. So if you're new and you've never tried that out, come in and see us. We do free consultations so we can set up a long-term game plan for you and break it down into a realistic goal with a realistic time frame to hopefully help you reach your overall goals as well. So hopefully we'll see you if we haven't seen you before. And have a good day, guys. Later. Bye.